We'll be talking about the Division 2 at some point. Okay, let's talk about headphones. Um, I have quite a few pairs of headphones, probably not as many as I'm sure some people out there have, but as a bit of an audiophile, I do tend to, um, one, enjoy collecting headphones in general, um, but then also headphones work for a variety of purposes and the best one for a specific medium might not be the best for your all-in-one, even though that's what most people are accustomed to, like these, just run-of-the-mill Apple headphones. Um, this is not what we're talking about today. If you want a cheap pair of headphones, this probably isn't the video for you, but we are going a little bit more in depth than these. Um, even though these are the generic Apple run of the mill ones, they're still kind of a little pricey and they're just okay. If you just don't really care too much, just need something to hide the background noise or if you just want to deter people from talking to you, uh, these will just do fine. But if you're looking to elevate your audio experience, be it listening to music, uh, consuming other forms of media, playing games, recording audio, this is when you can start getting into some variances and obviously, of course, preference comes to play with headphones. So we'll start off with my favorite pair of headphones in general. I'm just gonna start off right there, right off the bat. These are the Audio-Technica ATH m50 x's um, these are not the wireless version i just don't have the cord plugged in but these are by far my favorite pair of headphones they run about 150 dollars um, so yeah they're not super cheap but they're also not super expensive when you start talking about high-end high fidelity headphones that run you anywhere from like 200 or 300 400 dollars up in that range these headphones compete with them. Professional musicians, a lot of producers, a lot of studios use these headphones. They are very good headphones. Now let's talk about what that actually means. I do a little bit of uh, recording myself here and obviously this is my little room slash studio here. The low end or the bass isn't super so, so overpowering that um, you get like a muffled effect or more of a thumping sounds. They kind of clean up the mids a little bit more and the high end is pretty pretty nice but it's really giving you a more complete and realistic uh, soundscape helps with a wider range of audio and especially when I'm mixing and editing um, these these are these get the job done and if you just want to listen to music too these are fantastic $150 you will not find a better pair of headphones at this price range you could probably go up to like 200 and 300 range and you'd have a hard time finding headphones that are better than these so that's how much I trust these headphones so right off the bat if you just are looking for a recommendation of what my recommendation for headphones are around a similar range are you ready to take that next step step up your audio game these are the ones for you. These to round it out have a softer low end, but obviously it's still there. The drivers are really nice. I won't get super technical with these, but if you want to get like really technical and see the details, um, when we start talking about like frequency range of audio signals, the, the best thing to you can do is uh, experience it for yourself. Uh, I'm talking about like 20 hertz to 40,000 hertz. Um, doesn't really mean anything to the normal person, but I know for some of you out there, you know who I'm talking about that are watching this, that range does matter especially when I'm recording. I'm not saying that don't pay attention to that at all, but it's more tangible once you start, one, training your ear for it in the first place. This isn't just gonna happen right off the bat. And two, when you experience it for yourself. These are my favorite pair of headphones. Um, they're $150. These are the ones I recommend to pretty much anyone that asks me for headphone recommendations and 150 bucks audio technicals can't go wrong. So obviously I also game and that's like a really important hobby of mine. Game experience and gaming audio experience is a little bit different from musical audio experience. A lot of times the musicality and the scores in the game, you also don't want to miss out on too much of that. And that's going to be a topic for another video, but it has to be the right balance. At the end of the day, you're trying to perform and you have an objective in a game. So I'm going to talk about my very first pair of gaming specific headphones. These are the HyperX Cloud 2s. These are honestly also one of my favorite pairs of headphones in general. I've taken them with me when I've flown before in the past and they don't have like any real noise cancellation, but uh, even just for music, they have a good low end. I got a lot of good mileage out of this one and I still use them. This is what I keep connected to my PC. Um, they come with a microphone that you can remove and add. I don't really use that one that much. It's a fine microphone, but I use Antlion Mod Mic. We'll talk about 
microphones in a different video as well. But these are some of my favorite and probably one of the best made gaming headphones ever. I think these are still very highly rated. Uh, these also ran about $150 when I first bought them. But there's different purposes for gaming headsets versus a normal pair of headphones. You're looking for uh, a soundscape, ambient noise, and hearing footsteps and hearing things in the distance and better bi-directional audio if something's coming from your left, something's coming from your right, something's coming from behind you. That's where gaming headphones really have their bread and butter. Almost like a surround sound experience, but from a stereo headset. The difference between hearing something behind you or feeling it behind you versus just coming directly from the sub from both sides at once or more centered makes a big difference. Um, I haven't had any issues with them at all. They're still very comfortable. I'm, I've had these for, I don't know, four years and they're still holding strong. They get the job done. If you're looking for a good pair of headphones for your PC or even for your PS4 or, or your Xbox, these are good, but I have a different pair for when I'm console gaming. These are the Steel Series Arctis Pro wireless. These are pretty expensive pairs of headphones, I'm not gonna lie. They retail for $300. So far, I've had them for about a month. Now, we start getting to the wireless scene. So, for audio audiophiles, if you wanna talk about the difference between wireless and wired and why wired is so much better, I know, wired is better. But, Bluetooth and wireless connectivity is starting to get much, much better. You start getting higher fidelity of audio in your headsets these days, and these get the job done. Especially when I'm console gaming. The reason why I went wireless with console gaming is because I have a control on me. I want to lean back a little bit. It's a little bit more, you can be more competitive, but also console gaming is a little bit more couch gaming, a little bit more uh, casual, even though I have everything set up on my desk. It's easier for me to not have to worry about a wire when I have my controller here and it's like a whole different thing. It's a different setup. These work out really well. They sit pretty good on your head. Um, it's just a band that kind of stretches out a little bit. It's an aluminum frame, so the build quality is very nice. It's very strong. They feel premium in your hand, even though there's a lot of plastic on this. Um, the microphone for this headset is probably one of the best microphones I've ever experienced in a gaming headset in general. It still doesn't really compare to the mod mic that I have, but that's a separate accessory that you buy on top of your headphones. So most people aren't gonna go that route unless you're kind of crazy like me. These do more than just get the job done. We'll talk about the division soon, but when I'm playing that, the soundscape and the 360 audio that I get from these headphones are almost identical to the HyperX. The battery life on, on these are pretty solid as well, especially when you're considering high fidelity and the microphone in here. I can do multi-day, multi-hour sessions on one charge. So the battery sits on the outside here. Just pop this one in and then you put it into a station. The audio connects to that device which then plugs into your to your console or PC and that's where the audio is coming from. That's why they can do the high fidelity audio over wireless. Now this is one of the coolest features of this pair of headphones. You can have wireless audio for your gaming for your device but this also has Bluetooth on it. Because it doesn't run Bluetooth to the device you have the Bluetooth channel available for your phone or anything else if you want to listen to music while you're gaming at a lower level. Uh, you can do that if you want to make sure you're available to pick up a call, maybe you got the pizza coming over in your middle of your session. You can do that through this headset. You, you can control the audio levels for both of those things separately, which is really cool. It has an EQ mixer, so you can control that. If you are gaming on like Discord, you can have audio chat coming to here, voice coming out through there as well, while keeping it separate from the gaming session itself. So that's one of the cool things about the SteelSeries Arctis Pro. The audio quality is really strong. Uh, it's not quite as good for listening to music by itself, so I definitely wouldn't recommend doing that, especially at this price range. It's just not that great at music, but for gaming, these are really, really nice, and I do recommend them if you want to go the wireless route for your console. They're really great, but if you're gonna go the PC, I would say go the wired version. You're already sitting at your desk. Might as well get that little bit extra oomph. If you do wanna go wireless, these are nice, and I think they look pretty cool. That's obviously something you also have to consider. So when you start talking about wireless headphones and now everything is going wireless, especially if you're talking about just listening to music, being commuting or anything like that, something that you do have to consider and something that I also consider myself uh, to some degree is how do the headphones look? Um, obviously, if you only care about audio, you probably don't care about how the headphones look, but sometimes they're just kind of ugly. But that's why you have companies like Beats and Apple making those types of headphones and you pay a little bit more of a premium for the look and feel. However, However, if you want something a little bit more in between, something wireless, good audio quality, 
not super ugly, enter the Audio-Technica S700BT or Bluetooth. Not a great name for these headphones, but at the same time, naming schemes for headphones don't really need to get too crazy. Audio-Technica, if you haven't discovered by now, is one of my favorite audio manufacturers, especially for headphones. If you want to upgrade, but not go too far into the price range, I believe these are somewhere like 100 to $120 when I picked them up. They are technically over ear, so they sit on top of your ear, also closed back, but they're a little bit smaller. The ear cup isn't quite as large as some of the other over ear headphones, so for depending on like your ear size and your head size, it might be sitting on your ear. So they're not super comfortable for extremely long sessions. So I wouldn't recommend this if you're like on a flight or traveling long distances, like more than, I don't know, a couple hours at a time. Even though the drivers for these are a little bit smaller than the M50s, you do get some good punchy bass, a little bit more so than the M50s themselves. The highs are a little bit thinner than what I'm used to on over ear headphones, but for Bluetooth, they really get the job done. They sit comfortably, they sound really good. Now, these don't get really loud, especially if you're just listening to music on your phone or on a mobile device. Like, I wish it cranked up just a little bit more, especially if you're commuting or on a train or anything like that and there's a lot of ambient noise around it, you will hear some of that in the background. But for the most part, these are really solid headphones if you're just looking for a more intermediate wireless experience. I do recommend these. They're about a hundred dollars and i'll put all the links to everything in the video i continue to use them they're more of daily drivers for me especially when i'm going over here um and yeah they work they work well for commuting these also do have and most wireless he over ear headphones do have an input to go wired and that's when you can kind of like crank it up a little bit further the build quality is okay i mean it's just it's all plastic, um, but it's pretty firm. Nothing super premium about these, but I think that's kind of what I like about them. They're very unassuming. You wouldn't really guess that these are a little bit more pricier over your headphones. And Audio-Technica just does a good job of making quality items uh, in the audio scene. So I do recommend these, pick them up if you're looking for a wireless pair of over-ear headphones at a pretty good price range. Okay, so we've mostly talked about over-ear headphones. What about in-ear headphones? Oh boy, I told you I have headphones for different uses. I do have here a pair of Senso wireless uh, workout headphones uh, when I go to the gym. These are just fine. They're like a solid 50 bucks, which are pretty pricey for, for Bluetooth wireless headphones, but they're sweat resistant, they're waterproof, and they kind of have, when I'm working out, it's much easier to have the ear clip thingy, so it sits in your ear and they don't fall out when you're running around or anything like that. So I do like these. When you start using earbuds, in earbuds, at that are Bluetooth in this similar range, the audio quality starts becoming a little bit more noticeable. It's not quite as good as the over-ear uh, headphones. And to get like really strong audio experience with wireless earbuds, you're going to have to spend a little bit more than you might be comfortable with. Um, this is getting much better, especially with Bluetooth 4.2 and all that. But at the same time, when I'm working out, I'm not exactly looking for a high fidelity audio session because I'm not really paying attention to the music so much as it is just providing me background ambient noise. But these get the job done. They have a microphone if you want to pick up a call when you're there you, they can do that the battery life is pretty solid i think you get like anywhere from five to seven hours you don't need more than that for a week an hour of exercise every day you charge them on your rest day or something like that and then they'll get the job done and they're ready to go so these are the sensos i just picked them up on amazon you probably pick up any gen generic pair of headphones but there's usually a, a range you want to go for especially if you're going for like cheaper headphones to to work out in but still want a little bit more than crappy audio uh, anywhere from like 40 to $80 is probably the price range you want to stay in for workout headphones. And then let's talk about true wireless earbuds. So now with Apple's AirPods, um, everything is starting to go true earbud wireless. These are the Jabra Elite 65Ts Bluetooth. These are the active ones, but they're really, I only went with the active ones because of the color scheme, the black and, and, and copper um, uh, I liked. These earbuds are some of the highest rated uh, true wireless earbuds in the market right now. So they do run $150 for these pair of headphones. These are pretty pricey, especially when we're talking about earbuds. However, 
They do have really solid active noise cancellation. They have microphones on the outside, so if maybe you're commuting, you wanna hear audio around you and know, be aware of your surroundings, these are really good for that. And the audio quality on these are actually really strong. They're not super thin and small like the AirPods, so they allow for larger drivers and a little bit better noise cancellation on these. You can take calls on this. They come with a few months of Amazon Alexa subscription for anyone that wants to use those. I haven't used it myself, but these really do get the job done. I really like them, uh, especially in the winter. When I had beanies on, I had over ears on, it was really annoying. The audio was getting muffled because obviously I have stuff in my head and it just really was kind of in the way when I'm wearing a hoodie or anything like that. And these pop right in. The noise cancellation on these are very strong. You get somewhere around six to seven hours of continuous playthrough uh, and then the charging case gives you like an additional 15 or so hours so the case charges it itself it has its own battery pack in here as well so if you plug this in and or pop your headphones in uh, and it's not connected it's still going to be charging your earbuds themselves and then once you have to charge everything together you just plug it in and you're all set they're much more premium true wireless earbuds so something to consider but if you're trying to go with wireless earbuds and don't care too much for airpods these are the way to go. Now, I do want to talk about Beats here a little bit. Uh, my wife currently has a pair of the Solo 3s, and they're fine. They're good pairs of headphones. They're a little bit more pricey. Obviously, those are like $200, I believe, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And they're okay. Now, Beats, yes, are notoriously known for her kind of over exaggerating the low end a little bit. Um, and especially in the Solo 3s, it's true. Um, if I had to compare them to all the headphones I have, now this is gonna sound a little rough, but they barely sound better than the Amazon <laughs> workout ones that I have, in my personal opinion. They're stylish headphones, and there is something to be said about wanting to have headphones that kind of stand out, uh, something that you are going to enjoy wearing, and I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. Um, but if you're gonna go with Beats, I would probably recommend splurging that extra 100 50 to 100 dollars and getting the studio threes i've used those and those are much stronger headphones in my opinion it's still true that the low ones are going to be a little bit heavier but they're not quite as bad as they used to be but if you're talking raw pound for pound dollar for dollar they are too expensive now if you care about the aesthetics of your headphones and you care about um the style of your headphones and you're wearing it more as like a fashion item, an accessory on top of providing you with a device that you can listen to music to. Uh, I'm not gonna say that I'm above that because I've done that myself with different things. I would be lying if, if I didn't say the Steel Series, the look of the Steel Series Octus Pro wireless didn't have anything to do with that. Definitely it's something to to consider if you care about that, if you wanna like mix and match and you got your streetwear going or anything like that. It's all good, wear that. I don't hate them. They're more comfortable for daily driving. I do think Beats do a good job of like the ear cushion. They, 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 they feel really good on your head and they look good. They just look good. And I think there's something to be said for people that do enjoy that. Those are my headphones. I probably will continue to buy headphones, but these are the ones that I have now. Obviously I still have the generic Apple ones and that's what I use really. The only time I use those at this point anymore is if I forget them, I always kind of keep one in my backpack just in case I forget like one of my headphones somewhere. Or if I'm playing my Switch on the go because the stupid Switch doesn't have Bluetooth capability yet for some reason. Anyways, if I had to rank them, the ATH M50X is number one, hands down, no question about it. Number two would be my HyperX Cloud 2s. These are just that good. Three would be my Jabra Elite 65Ts. These, I just really like them. They're, they might become my daily drivers at some point. Followed by the SteelSeries Arctis Pro Wireless and then the Bluetooth Audio Technicas S700s. And then truly at the bottom would be the Senso Workout wireless headphones that I have. Those are just, they're okay. That's not to say that the way that I rank them would mean that I wouldn't buy them anymore. I did buy them. I would buy all these headphones again. If you don't care about wireless and you're looking for the best possible audio quality for your dollar, the M50Xs are the way to go. If you care about wireless, want to save a little bit of cash but still graduate a little bit above generic branded or generic uh, entry level uh, wireless over your headphones i do recommend the s700 bluetooth you won't regret that purchase and then for gaming i still do recommend the HyperX cloud 2s but if you want to go wireless the arctis pro wireless are expensive yes but they're so 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 worth it in my opinion 
they truly are one of the best pairs of gaming headsets in the market today. So I recommend those. Otherwise just pick up like a generic Razer or Logitech wireless headset. So those were all my headphones. I'll do a quick audio test of the headphones with my microphone. I don't know how well it's gonna pick it up, but I'll leave that at the end of the video. So I'll leave timestamps here below so you can hear kind of what they sound like. And thanks for watching. When that feeling starts to come back,